Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to the first ever No Wrong Answers, Book Forum's new series of conversations between authors. My name is Michael Miller, and I'm an editor at Book Forum. And I'm incredibly excited and honored to introduce our first two featured writers, Anuk Arud Pragasam and Mega Majumdar. Um, Anuk was born in Colombo, Sri Lanka, and lived in the United States while attending Stanford and Columbia universities. His first novel, The Story of a Brief Marriage, which was published by Flatiron Books in 2016, won the DSC Prize for South Asian Literature and was shortlisted for the Dylan Thomas Prize. His new novel, A Passage North, is um, published by Hogarth Press and is on the long list of the 2021 Booker Prize. He currently lives in Paris, where he's a fellow at the Columbia Institute for Ideas and Imagination. Mega was born in Calcutta, India, and moved to the United States to attend Harvard University. She's the author of the novel A Burning, which was a New York Times notable book, and which also was nominated for the National Book Award and the National Book Critics Circle uh, John Leonard Prize. A Burning was published by Knopf last year and was just issued in paperback by Vintage. She works as the editor-in-chief at Catapult Books, and she was in New York. Um, I want to quickly thank all of you for coming and supporting the magazine and these two amazing novelists. Uh, please buy their books. Um, we will put links to their publishers in the Zoom chat box. And uh, of course, you can also buy them at your local independent bookstore. I want to mention that we will reserve some time at the end for questions from the audience. Um, if you have any questions, please post them in the chat box. And with that, I want to turn it over to Anouk and Mega. Thanks so much, Michael. Um, hey, Anouk, I'm so excited to do this. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Um, I'm very excited to chat with Anouk about A Passage North. Um, the first thing that I have to say, which I'm sorry to embarrass you again, um, is congratulations on the Booker nomination. That's huge. Um, can you tell us what it was like to find out? Um, thanks, Mega. Um, and thanks everyone for being here. And thanks, um, thanks to Book Forum uh, and Michael for making this possible. I'm really excited to, to talk to you today. Thanks for, thanks for being here, Mega. Um, yeah, I, um, yeah, I guess I found out, you know, I don't know. It it uh, it didn't like. It took a while for me to understand what it meant because I don't think I um I don't uh, I haven't like really followed the prize um and I guess I didn't realize how many people did and um how I guess uh, that it was significant that it <laughs> that it has this kind of like uh, uh, almost like uh, like historical significance of some kind, but. Um, you know, I, I mean, it was very, I mean, it was very nice. It was, it's nice to be um, like recognized, right? It's nice to, it's nice to feel that people will read what you write. Um, and that's been nice, but I'm a little bit, um, uh, I've been a little bit um, wary of, uh, of the, just the amount of like publicity involved, the amount of like, uh, <laughs> like noise and then like, and movement. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine it's it's been very frenzied for you. Um, for those who are joining us who have not dipped into the book yet, would you like to introduce the book? Yeah, so um, this book that I wrote is called um, it's called A Passage North, and um, it took me uh, a long time to write uh, a lot of like 
circling and recircling and it is um it's set in it's set in the country that i was uh, born in and raised in sri lanka um and it's set in the in the years after the end of the civil war which was a 30 year civil war in sri lanka um uh and specifically uh it kind of um discusses in in various ways various kinds of ramica- ramifications of the war like psychic psychological ramifications um especially of the last two years which were very violent um violent time in the um like in the war a lot of people died a lot of thousands of civilians tamil civilians were killed and so um a lot of my work has been a kind of uh response to uh to the events of the of the end of the war and to the to the events of my community um and this book was actually a kind of my first book uh really kind of imagined what it might be like to have been in that kind of situation from the point of view of someone or of an author at least who was very far away and um this book wasn't supposed to be about uh the civil war and i mean in a way this is also part of my part of my ambivalence of my you know of uh, my ambivalence to any kind of to like recognition of this book or praise of this book because you know as nice it is it nice it is as it is it's um yeah i mean it, th- th- these books are ultimately and this book also is ultimately about something like very tragic and i i i, I thought that i had i had had enough uh, of of writing about the war and um i was going to write something very different a relationship about a, a book about a relationship between a young man a young tamil man in colombo and his grandmother and as i wrote the war kind of seeped in in various ways um almost in like little like freudian slips that after a while of writing i realized uh, i couldn't ignore that this was clearly part of what was happening um and that's i don't know if that's a description of the book but it's also just it's also a little difficult to describe the book because it's very much in the in the kind of mind of of the main character who is traveling from the south of colombo from the south of sri lanka from colombo to the northeast to the former war zone to to attend a funeral the funeral of um his grandmother's caretaker rani who has died by falling into a well and uh, rani is a woman who uh had had spent her entire life in the northeast and grew up in the in the middle of the fighting and who lost both of her sons in the last few months of the war um her youngest son on the penultimate day because of uh, due to shelling so um so he finds out that 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 rani has fallen into a well and is immediately unsure about whether it was an accident as it seems to be or whether um it might have been a suicide or intentional in some way mm-hmm. and the novel just kind of consists of him uh taking a long train journey from the south of the country to the north uh and kind of witnessing her funeral mm. i think it's so interesting to hear you say that the book started with this relationship between a grandmother and grandson and then grew into something much more encompassing because i think now the book holds so much there is that initial relationship there is a section on um the funeral which reading about it after this past year was was quite something and it also holds a love story there's a love story in the book too um and i guess i want to ask you you know going back to the seed of the book what is it about a grandparent grandchild relationship that initially drew you um i think it's the fact that um in most grand grandchild grandparent relationships uh the grandparent is in the process of withdrawing from the world is in the process of receding from uh from from the entanglements in life the world that they that that uh that an older person lives in is progressively getting smaller um and less connected whereas the grandchild is generally coming into the world the grandchild is is learning how to walk is learning how to talk is acquiring basic forms of agency as the grandparent is losing the various forms of agency that they've taken for granted um all their lives so um yeah i guess 
I guess this this kind of it's this it's this relate it's this time when 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 two humans are both in a kind of state of uh, dependency, but also in a kind of inverse relationship uh, or trajectory with 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 respect to that uh, with respect to that dependency. And there's this um, there's this there's this there's this interesting movement uh, or this interesting contrast in their um, directions of involvement with the world. And I, I kind of wanted to explore these, uh, yeah, I guess these contrasting, yeah, these contrasting, um, these, the, the contrasting longings, I suppose, uh, that, that people have when on the one hand, they are coming into the world and, yet they, and, they, and they don't yet like know what it is and they don't yet know what it, it might involve and, and who they might become. And then on the other hand, people who are um, being pulled away from it and, and, and long, uh, I mean, it depends on the person, I suppose, with, with Apama, with the grandmother character in this novel, um, who longs for the world. And it's not anything, again, specific about the world, but it's, um, it's a longing simply to be there. Mm -hmm. uh, the old or the, the person who is receding from the world doesn't necessarily want this kind of life or that kind of life, or to be this kind of person or that kind of person. They want to sense and participate in a world. So there's also this kind of there's there's this there's this longing that isn't quite um, that cannot be quite um, specified or, or directed in a in a in a in a, in a specific way uh, for both these for both these um, uh, for both parts of this relationship for both members. Yeah, and I was really struck. You know, when I started reading this book, right away I was so struck by the quality of attention in your text. Um, and I, I want to ask, you know, how you do it? How did you plug into this register of writing where we really slow down and pay attention to every um, change of emotion, to every hidden aspiration and hope and ambition within an interaction? How do you do it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's that's very nice of you. Um, when you say, you know, it's interesting because uh, uh, I guess a lot of people who've, uh, a few people who've read the book have have pointed to, um, have used this word attention, and I'm like, I'm not, I'm not quite sure, like what it means because in a sense, um, there's a lot that the book doesn't pay attention to, um, and there's a lot that my writing doesn't pay attention to. Um, there's a lot that um, also my own, uh, I've been praised for my, um, yeah, like some, some kind of faculty of, of perception, but I, there's a lot that I don't see and I don't remember. And like a lot of really um, salient, you'd think salient things in my environment, I kind of pass over very, very quickly. So it's not, it's not like, it's not, it's about this, that, that something is being attended to, not that, a lot of things are being attended to. And I think, you know, I, I, if, if, that, if, if it's possible for that to happen, it's because I, I take my time, I think, with, um, I, I guess I take my time writing, but I also, um, I, I take my time, I take the time of the situation and I try to, um, to expand it out. I guess I, yeah, I guess I don't often think, I don't think of a story, I think of a situation. And um, a situation involves various um, is is teeming often, and it, it it involves various contradictory things and various conciliatory things, and they um, and they meet each other or miss each other in various ways. And I so I take a situation, and I and I think how can I how can I spread it out? How can I pull its edges uh, out uh, wide enough across across a book, really across across two covers? that um that we can really enter enter a situation and i guess that need to slow things down um for me it comes from it comes from a it comes from i guess uh, the sense that uh that life happens too fast that um that every day that there are so many things uh, that, that that pass us by or that, that strike our eye that we don't give uh, we don't give attention to, or we don't give, I should say, due attention to. We don't give, um, 
uh, we don't give uh, life um, the time that it actually deserves. And so it, it's almost, I mean, there is this memorial impulse, I think, uh, that I have when I write this imp impulse to memorialize that. I mean, of course, in my writing, there is a very, that's true in a very concrete sense, because I seek to memorialize uh, uh, the Tamil lives that were needlessly destroyed uh, at the end of the civil war. That's what I've been doing since I've started writing. But also just to, to, to memorialize uh, like moments of daily life, moments of ordinary life that that's that that are often just uh, slip by. I think. Mm. Yeah. How long did you work on this book? For five years. For five years. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And did um, I'm so curious about whether the past year of the pandemic changed anything about the pace or the level of reflection that you were able to do in your own daily life? No, you know, I, I finished this book, um, I finished it before the pandemic started. And um, and I think, you know, probably if I was writing now, I would be writing a very restless book. And there would probably be, um, there would probably be a lot of uh, action, you know, like, <laughs> like yearned for movement. Uh, but when, yeah, this book, no, it was, it was, I guess it was part of, um, like a so-called ordinary life or my, like, you know, ordinary times. Um, and um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it, it really is just a desire to, um, to, yeah, to slow things down or to give things like, to, to give things space. Yeah, there is um, a, a section of the book where we um, attend a funeral. And like I was saying, you know, reading about that after this past year when so many people have not been able to grieve or or be with loved ones that was that was really it was a really striking section of the book for me to read do you feel like you're seeing your own book differently after the past year in any way no um no, because uh, because you know while while I have been fine and the, and and while my life has um, has always been fine, um, my community has been subject to catastrophe for decades now, um, and a situation in which there are no uh, there are no there's no way to um, I guess bury or or cremate or do rituals is has has been the case has, has been the case for, for for many people in the northeast for for a long time um, and it, yeah it's interesting though that you say that and I'm and I'm glad that it has uh, it might have some wider resonance in that sense but when I was you know in my first book there was this the main character, um, there was this scene where um, he he has to leave behind his mother during um, during a during a sh during a, a bombing of, of the camp of the of the camp of displaced people that they're located in, and they're running from one place to another, and a shell strikes, and a piece of shrapnel uh, uh, enters his mother's stomach, and she uh, and she dies immediately, and. Um, he has to move on because he will be killed if not. And so he's forced to um, leave his mother's body. Uh, and he covers it with, um, with some fabric, some sari fabric, uh, and he weighs down the sari fabric with, with some stones and he leaves. And this is how he leaves his mother. And this, is, this was very common during the last year and a half of, uh, of the fighting. And many people never saw, um, saw the bodies of their loved ones, which anybody who has... Um, who has lost a loved one knows that 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 uh, that being in the presence of their body helps you understand what has happened, uh, and performing the rituals often uh, plays an important part in being able to mourn. And this happened to a lot of people. And this 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 mother in this in my first book was not given a burial, and or or a funeral. And I think what I really wanted to do in this novel, I was also trying to get past. The, the immediate violence of uh, of the genocide in 2008 2009 and I was and and the way I guess I 
tried to do that. One of the things that I tried to do was I tried to um, to perform like to 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 perform a funeral in this in this text. It was a kind of uh, uh, yeah. It was I was I was performing this act of mourning by um, by giving this kind of meticulous and slow. I think it it happens over three chapters uh, account of account of a funeral, and um, yeah, and, you know, I mean, I think that I mean that's also even now it's it's not possible to memorialize uh, publicly or to mourn the dead uh, in in Sri Lanka, and so mourning has generally become an act that has to be private or removed from the public sphere. And um, I guess for me, my writing is also such a space. For me, for me personally. Yeah, you're you're talking about the continuities between your first book and and now this book, and I'm so curious to hear. Do you feel like there are obsessions that you will always carry forward in your writing, or do you feel like you are at a stage where you are seeing? departures emerge in what you are interested in as a writer? Mm. That's a, yeah, that's such an interesting question. Uh, you know, I thought I was departing from the subject of my first novel, like, you know, like we were talking about it, <laughs> and that I wasn't. Yeah. And, um, you know, yeah, I, I wish to be able to write, um, I wish to be able to write without, um, write on something else. And I, I, I mean, for my, I mean, the, the novel I'm working on now is about, I mean, it's also, I mean, connected to the war, but it's the repercussions of the war or violence that it deals with are even further away because it's set in, in Toronto and New York and in Paris, and it deals with diasporic life to some degree because there's a huge Tamil diaspora. And so it, it's related to the situation of, of violence and the situation of the war. But, um, but yeah, it, it's, it's, it's even more removed. And so I, I see myself like trying to uh, move away slowly um, just to be able to have, I don't know, um, I don't know if I'll like ever be a, like, a, light, a lighthearted writer, but, um, uh, but uh, yeah, it's, yeah, I would like to, I would like to move away. But you know, it is, it's not just an obsession for me. It's an obsession for uh, uh, every single uh, a Tamil person from Sri Lanka of my generation, um, and I don't know if I don't know if any of us will will forget it. Mm. None of us will forget it. Mm. Yeah. Well, it is it is true that you know. So we, we've we've talked about the war and the and the big section on the funeral, but there is a love story here too, which, yeah. which I want to talk about. Um, yeah. What was it? what was it like writing this love story and what made you decide to kind of fold this love story into the book? Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a good question. I mean, yeah, and you know, this, this novel isn't, I mean, I'm being very, um, uh, I mean, uh, so solemn, I guess, but yeah, I mean, this book isn't, isn't, I mean, it isn't solemn and I don't think my first book was solemn either, but there is here, um, yeah, there is this relationship between the main character, or oh, there's this, um, there are these uh, series of uh, remembrances and reflections on on a relationship that was very important um, to the main character that are kind of interspersed um, in the book, uh, mainly in the train journey part of the of, of the novel. And I think I was, I think I was for many reasons, but I was think, I think. Uh, I was interested, for one, in the way in which um, uh, uh, falling in love, I suppose, uh, or um, becoming infatuated with with somebody, uh, that experience often involves um, a kind of re envisioning of the world outside, uh, a kind of um, reorientation of one's uh, relationship. To the world, um, and a sense that also often and often like misleadingly. Uh, I mean, these are for the. This is, I guess, uh, for the people who have, who have, who, who for whom the, who were fortunate enough uh, to be able to to have this experience uh, with another person. Uh, uh, a sense of a perhaps misleadingly confident sense of 
being above or outside uh, uh, the run of ordinary life, a sense of a certain kind of um, uh, a certain kind of a, f- a feeling of bliss or a, or a feeling of transcendence, um, it, it, uh, and and the I guess this longing, what what the what the main character um, I guess mourns most about their relationship is the is this is the loss of this sense of another world, uh, a world that exists outside the world of ordinary life, and I think this idea of another world. Um, a world that is not the one that one lives in, but that one has a certain kind of relationship to, um, a, a certain kind of virtual or conceptual or emotional relationship to. Um, that that idea comes up in 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 so many ways in the novel. The um, the the idea for I mean the desire for another world is I mean in in Tamil history it's important because it is the idea i mean it was instantiated uh, in the idea of another country in this in the in the separatism of i guess uh, the tamil the tamil the tamil militant movements and the tamil separatist movements the idea of a new a new world a new world made from scratch and it's also there in the grandmother character who is receding from the world and who has this um, who is actually the only character in the book who is not in the world uh, uh, so to call it the the ordinary world she's been uh, slowly pried away from it but who who actually seeks to be in that world the other characters rani for example the 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 grandmother's caretaker wants to um she wants to return to a world that no longer exists the world that contain that, that contain okay. both of her sons so like the book is a kind of um study of different kinds of longing for other worlds, uh, real, imagined, historical, um, uh, possible, and and I think I think this was the aspect of of kind of of the uh, of the erotic or the romantic relationship that was that was most um, was most interesting to me. I think. Yeah. Um, I want to take a second to to zoom out a little bit. I know we've been talking very specifically about about this book, but I'm so curious to hear about your journey as a writer. How did you start writing? How did you write your first book? What was the process of coming to the second book? Can you take us through it? Um, Well, yeah, I, you know, I, I, I came to writing accidentally and I, I guess I came to it uh, through philosophy, which I also came to accidentally. Um, Did you study philosophy? What's that? Did you study philosophy? Yeah, I have. Um, I actually have a PhD in philosophy. Oh my god, that makes so much sense. <laughs> yeah, actually, if you knew, um, if you, uh, if you, if you, if you're aware of uh, uh, philosophy and the discipline of philosophy in, uh, I guess, English-speaking universities and American and British universities, you you wouldn't you wouldn't say that I don't think because because philosophy as it's practiced is a very um, uh, it's a very um, rigorous uh, and precise and humble discipline. It's not a discipline. People, uh, people, uh, philosophers, uh, people who who work in in philosophy in universities um, tend to be very um, very careful about not saying things that they're not that they don't have justification and that justification for. They don't have a system of of reasons behind and. This is not at all how I write. Um, <laughs> like I often give reasons for, for things I say or for observations that I make, but I um, they're often conjectural. They're often like presented as hypotheses um, that uh, uh, you are asked to consider and that may make sense of some kind of experience uh, or phenomena. But there, um, yeah, my, my my writing is very, I guess, essayistic in this sense. There's a lot of digression. A lot of this digression is in the form of kind of reflection. Um, and I guess it was it was like this freedom, the desire for this freedom, the freedom that the freedom to conjecture, the freedom to make suggestions, the freedom to um, to focus specifically on certain kinds of situation. That that really kind of made, kind of made me uh, move towards the novel when I when I learned that this was possible in the novel and I think, but I think like the fact that I was so interested in philosophy when I was younger, um, 
specifically in the wonderment of philosophy the kind of wonderment that that takes one that makes one ask a philosophical question when one is young you know like before you you've read books or been educated in a in a in a formal sense uh this this kind of mood of um of uh of let me let me step aside or move back for a moment and at, and and look at the sweep of life and see if i can make some sense of it um it's the moment where the the swimmer um the swimmer uh takes a takes a break from their stroke and and looks around to see how far they've come and uh this this moment this is a philosophical moment for me is i guess one that's in all my in in a lot of my writing i think i think that's kind of the i mean that's kind of the relationship and i think that's how i yeah that's how i moved into 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 fiction and it's also why a lot of my fiction is uh, my writing is um yeah that there's there's not often uh, a lot of story and there's not often a lot of um character development and and i guess like things like this mm that's interesting that you say that um i'm going to ask one more question which is uh something that i'm personally very interested in before we invite michael back on screen um and my question has to do with trains and train journeys um i love long train journeys and i love that this book holds two train journeys kind of folded in a really interesting way um what made you want to write about the experience of a train journey well at, at the level of at the level of experience i mean the trains in your country uh, i would say uh and the and the and the long journeys and the old trains and the old stations and the villages that pass by and the sense of freedom that you get on a on a long indian train um i would say i've been in well I, you know it, it's not something it's not something that i thought about before i i realized that there were actually three journeys folded into each other three train journeys in this book and i realized oh i'm actually i guess uh, drawn to the train as a mode of transportation and i think the reason is that if i am uh, if we are um, contrasting the train with the other for example major mode of of land transportation the the vehicle the car the truck the bus um there's a sense in which because the train has tracks the de- the destination is always determined the desti- the destination might be delayed or it might be uh it might be delayed in one way or another but um but there's a sense of destiny on a train track uh there's a sense of being born to a destination and that being born is um is doesn't require your effort or your strenuousness um it is going to happen you are being born towards the future and that is something that is not the case in a in a bus or a car when when you stop when the driver makes a mistake when there's an accident when you need to stop and eat uh, when you take the wrong direction um there's a sense in which uh, i guess like most conventional land transport is very um is very dependent on us and i and i think it was this this uh, yeah this the the sense of fate that is built into the the train and the train tracks that i think is so um, for me like the sense of destiny i love that i don't think i've thought about that before yeah um well with that we will invite michael to join us back on screen i see people have been sending in questions which is great wow thank you um that was great uh and yes we do have some uh questions from the audience i'm going to start with a question from ashendri um and you can know that you touched on this somewhat but um how has your background in philosophy influenced your your fiction um your creative writing um that's yeah that, i mean that's a, it's a, it's a, it's a good question and i'm not sure I actually um i actually know i i think that the kind of philosophy that i was trained in um what's called analytic philosophy often is um 
it's very careful and i mean it's it, the, the, the it's very careful and it's very precise and it 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 seeks to understand problems by breaking them down into um component problems and to deal with those component problems in the in the most precise way possible and as a result you often there's often a there's often not a lot of um uh the, one doesn't one isn't satisfied in the sense of being able to see the world as as a whole one is like one is lost i don't know lost in the trees for the woods or whatever the expression is but um but i suppose that like this care has also this this um this attentiveness to the specific claims that one makes for oneself for the world or or for life uh, that you get in philosophy has has led me also to be i guess kind of careful and to always always know to to qualify or to shed doubt on a on a claim that is made because there is a lot of i guess there are a lot of statements in in my book and i guess in in that sense it's it's clearly influenced by philosophy there's a lot of statements of the form uh uh maybe this is what it means to 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 uh to to mourn someone or maybe this is why um people take so long to grieve or maybe this is why people remember only these things at these moments or whatever um uh and and i maybe it's the statement making uh that that um that is probably yeah probably the the the, the most obvious kind of line of connection i think this is a question from rebecca wicker there is some regret from Krishan, who's a character in the, the new novel, Passage North, uh, for missing the war, consuming him after he's left the country. You grew up in Colombo during the war. How much of that distance is something you felt witnessing and experiencing the war from afar? Um, thank you for the question. Yeah, it, it, it's, um, it's all I felt. It's all I felt um, was my distance. Um, I, you know, and it, you know, it's not just me. I think any um, most most um, Tamil people who grew up outside the war zone feel this very strong sense of guilt and this kind of obsession with the violence uh, and this const this desire to constantly, um, I guess, be in the presence of, I guess, virtual representations of that violence as a form of uh, as a form of uh, self punishment um, almost. So it was very strong for me. It was very strong, and um, yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't know what to say. It was yeah. I I for a long time uh, I was uh, I was I guess I was racked. Yeah, I was racked by guilt, and it was not just guilt, but it was the sense of um, consciousness not matching your environment because you're aware in your mind of all the time because it's always at the back of your mind of. Um, of great pain uh, but then there's nothing in the environment that registers that pain um, and it creates this sense of unreality either the pain that you're that you're dwelling on is not real or the world around you is not real and uh, this kind of um, yeah this desire for a world that reflects the situation that you are that you are that you are dealing with in your mind was was very strong for me and i guess I guess that's why a lot of a lot of people spent a lot of time looking at pictures and videos of of the violence, uh, and I think that's why I did too. And I think that's probably why I spent so much time um, thinking about this in my writing. Great. Um, here's a question from Kenneth Schmoll. I read somewhere that you were Anouk. Uh, I read somewhere that you were influenced by Robert Musil's *The Man Without Qualities*. I'm wondering what other writers have influenced you? Um, hmm. uh, a lot, I mean, a lot of writers, but I guess, um, you know, I, 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 to be honest, it's, uh, I don't, I don't read that much because I'm a slow reader and I tend to read, um, I tend to read, uh, I tend to really love the modernist writers, the, the European modernist writers, which is, I guess, you know, uh, yeah, I don't know how usual or unusual that is, but um, these are I like go back a lot to to you know Virginia Woolf and um, Proust and uh, uh, Robert Musil and Samuel Beckett and 
Um, and the writers from the 70s and the 80s and the 90s uh, today who, 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 who still in some way um, carry on the, the legacy of, of modernism, of I guess the modernist novel. Um, uh, and I'm not referring to people like, I guess, James Joyce uh, uh, or Gertrude Stein who are a different kind of modernist, um, but the, the, the kind who is interested in the exploration of uh, the mind and in the exploration of, of, of time. So, and I guess with, with, with more recent writers, there's a Hungarian writer I really, I really love, Peter Nadash, who I read again and again. Um, and uh, um, there's a bunch of uh, Central European, I guess, Thomas Bernard, um, Hermann Brock, um, Zebald, um, Natalie Sarot, uh, but the, these are some, I, 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 I've been reading a lot more contemporary fiction recently, um, but there was for a long time a rule that I would read only one or two books a year uh, of something that was published in the last 10 years, but I, I don't do this anymore. <laughs> wow. Um, this is a, here's a question from an anonymous attendee. Um, and look, your new novel is far beyond a love story, but I think readers hold on to that familiarity of love because it's easy and fluid. I know it's out of your control, but is this how you envisioned your book to be received? Oh, um, th and thank you for the thank you for this comment. Um, uh, so many uh, thoughts around how one would envision one's book being received. <laughs> um, I envisioned it uh, received with fanfare and trumpets on the street and uh, all sorts of things that uh, that weren't the case and that won't ever be the case. Um, so I guess, I guess, I guess I wanted the book to be, I wanted it to give a reader um, uh, time or like, yeah, time and quiet and solace. Um, I wanted it to uh, to make a reader um, more aware of where their body is as they're reading. I wanted it to uh, make a reader aware of their relationship to time. And because these are the things that I wanted for myself uh, as I write. Um, so if it, if it can do these things and if that can be a solace for someone, uh, Actually, I mean, I don't actually think in terms of an audience, really. Um, I think how my, my, my sister is my first reader, so I, um, I often think of her responses. But um, my own desire is, to, is, to, is, for, is for quiet, um, or at least it was while I was writing this book. Wow. Um, and I have a follow, we have a follow-up question from Rebecca Wicker. Um, I also grew up in Colombo during the war and gravitate toward the war narrative. Is that something you have felt has become stronger since leaving or something we have always had to be, had to be a part of us and our narratives? As you have said, the war stays with you. Mm. I don't know, because a lot of people have forgotten about it. And uh, especially actually people in Sri Lanka, people in Sri Lanka have forgotten about it. I, I left Sri Lanka when I was 18 and um and so that land has um before the end of the war and so that land for me has become associated with the images that i that i came across after i left the country on a video screen for people who present life and the run of everyday life can so often be is is so um is so overwhelming uh, and so constant that and one is so one is so bombarded by the present always that um, that the past is always very quickly forgotten, even when it's um, even when it's a traumatic or a violent past. Um, even when it's a traumatic or violent past, it it often appears just uh, uh, in terms of eruptions or cracks or fissures in 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 one's relationship to the present, because things are always changing. You're always in a new situation. There are always needs um, to be taken care of. Uh, so. Yeah, in a way, actually, um, in a way, actually, for me, it, it's um, th there's a special relationship to the history of the island and the history of violence 
that only the diaspora can hold because it's only for the diaspora that the island is is not ongoing for a lot of the diaspora for the tamil diaspora violence has become a fixed part of our conception of 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 the island uh, and there's a sense in which uh, a lot of pe people who are no longer in the island one and a half million tamils uh, in particular a half of our population has been has been um, has been compelled to leave the country and um, and and there's often you often hear the claim that uh, these people are not aware of the situation on the ground or they don't know what things are actually like but there's also a sense in which um, uh, these people who experienced violence and then were forced to flee because of it and whose only memory of this place or whose most salient memory of this place is the memory of violence that uh, that that they are in fact testimonies to to something that deserves to be remembered but that ordinary life does not allow to be remembered right and i'm going to end with a question uh, of my own for for both of you and it's it's a kind of a general question it might be a little bit too general but i was just thinking um just in if the difference between your first novel and your your second novel um just in terms of urgency and how that affects the narrative and mega your uh, a burning contains these three uh different perspectives um at least three uh and these characters are so distinct but i i was i just wanted to ask a question about how circumstance like how the interplay of circumstance and character plays out in your work if that makes any sense. I mean, I was kind of led to this question, Anouk, because I feel like the, the new novel is just so much more introspective for, you know, and for obvious reasons. And Mega, certain characters of yours have, you know, like I said, they're, they're, they're very distinct, but they have, they also come up against different boundaries and different, uh, just different circumstances. And I just wondered if you, each of you could comment on that. You want to go first, Mega? <laughs> I'm, I'm really curious to hear your answer. Um, well, you know, some of that urgency that you're talking about, Michael, um, is is part of the was part of the seed of the book for me. Um, I think in many ways I was such a I was such a tinkerer until I came to the idea for this book, and so it it grew out of the sense of needing to ask questions that felt vital about how do people hold on to ambition when you have the ascendance of the right wing around you? What does it mean to try and imagine a better life for yourself when you live within systems which are indifferent to you or try to thwart you? Um, you know, what does it mean to hold on to humor and jokes and laughter within that situation? So I think uh, some of that, some of that urgency was definitely about um, asking those questions that felt really vital to me. Yeah, that's, a, I mean, yeah, it's really interesting because um... Yeah, it kind of, it, it, yeah, it's, it's really interesting because it kind of shows, or it's a good example of, I guess, yeah, different kind of possible responses to a, a, like a political crisis, let's call it, because um, I guess, um, Michael, you're saying that my, my, this novel was so introspective. Um, and I think part of the emphasis on introspection for me uh, had to do with also wanting to create uh, a sense of uh, lacking agency and which is a very strong sense for me as an observer of 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 a genocide uh, the sense of not being able to do anything uh, of not being able to act of being uh, simply forced to deal with this event in one's consciousness and so it was a kind of yeah i think for me um the sense in which the event was uh, uh, so so overwhelming um, and so complete in its, I guess, in its destruction of a of a of a life world, was something that I could only respond to um, 
in a novel that that kind of contained no action no and no urgency in fact does that make sense totally yeah you know, i was just saying right right which i i didn't mean to interrupt i just yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I think that's i think that's my um I think that's my somber, my somber answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, how do you think about urgency and and what does it mean for you in your in your editorial work? Because I'm sure that is something that you think about as well. Oh. Wow. Um, I wasn't be I wasn't expecting to be asked. <laughs> um. Well, I mean, I think that I I think of it in I think of it the way that that you presented it, Mega, is that I find, I, I think that what you were saying is that sometimes um, well, I, we, I, I try to respond, I, I try to introduce urgency. I mean, I work at a book review. And so I think that, you know, in some ways one can shun urgency uh, at a book review or, or, or Shun is probably not the right word, but you can avoid it. Um, but I feel that uh, just for the health of the discussion of the culture, um, that some sort of urgency needs to be present. Now, how I find that, I guess, is a much bigger question. Um, you know, it comes up in all sorts of ways. I mean, of course, it comes up in terms of social justice. It comes up. But to me, I mean, it can come up in a review of a book about Robert Musial. You know, like if I find the right writer, uh, like perhaps a nook, if that book ever appears. You know, that's that that's that's. I don't mean that to sound flip, but I think that that's probably how I could best answer that. So um, I think yeah, I think I agree with that. Yeah, I think that I think. Urgency is also so, so often it's a function of uh, also where one is at a particular time. In That's one's right. And, and I guess like, I guess what I'm trying to say is like there, there's so many different kinds of urgency and I don't want to lump them all together. Um, certainly uh, the urgency that's presented in both of your novels is, is uh, something I want to pay attention to, but that I personally haven't experienced. So um, so yeah, yeah. Uh, so thank you so much. Um, this has been an amazing, I, I'm, I'm just so happy uh, that you both agreed to do this. And, and uh, I, I wanna extend a quick thank you to uh, the other people at Book Forum who helped put this together. Um, Dave O'Neill, uh, Mara Smith, Lizzie Harding, Daniel McConnell, Brian Green, Tony Kerner, and Jennifer Krasinski, uh, and Kay Koza. Um, and I want to say thank you to the audience. I mean, it's great, you know, this is the first time we were doing this, and, and I'm just, I'm really happy that you're all here. Thank you for supporting the magazine. Please buy these books, and uh, please subscribe to Book Forum. Uh, we're putting links to everything in the chat box. And uh, yeah, thank you. thank you. Have a great night. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Book Forum. And thank you, Mega, so much. And thank, thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Jennifer. This was yeah. really special. Good night. Bye. Bye-bye.